so grateful the weather was a little more conducive to our travel tonight. <laughs> we have quite a few visitors with us from Goodwood tonight. We're so grateful that you guys made the trip from Baton Rouge down here to come and, and be with us tonight. Brother Larry's going to be delivering a lesson to us on the faith of Noah. I know you're all looking forward to that. Did you get enough to eat today? You know what? I'm, I'm just as hungry as I can be. Ain't <laughs> nobody fed me. I thought y'all were going to Ha, ha, ha. He's telling stories now. <laughs> you bet. Not only was, did we have plenty of it, but it was exceptionally good. <laughs> I, knew, I knew it would be because I've eaten there before too, so... <laughs> Well, it is good to have you all here tonight. We're going to start here in just a moment. Brother Tim is going to lead us in an opening prayer, and uh, then uh, Brother Jerry will lead us in our singing. Um, there was at least two things I was going to share with you. Oh, Thursday night, um, we would like to finish everything out with a little coffee and a few cookies, nothing extravagant, so... That's what we'll do Thursday at the end of the meeting. So if you're thinking about that and you make good cookies, you can bring them. I don't mind. Uh, <laughs> coconut flavors, okay. <laughs> uh, there was another announcement. Somebody told me something. Tim. Oh, yes, no class tomorrow night for Tim's class. We'll all be in here. Uh, yeah, all the classes. So all of the young people will be in here tomorrow night for the meeting. So uh, the teachers are, are off the hook tomorrow night. Uh, everybody's going to meet in here for the meeting. All right, I think that is it. I, guys, um, do me a favor. Get When you get home tonight, uh, get on your, your phone, get on your YouTube app, find Gonzalez Church of Christ, and then click on the live tab. The very thing at the, 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 the video at the very top will be the lesson from tonight. Click on the little three ellipsis button next to it and it'll give you the option to share that. Share that on your Facebook, share it in email, share it with someone uh, as best you can. And uh, that way we can kind of get the word out for our last two nights of the gospel meeting. And for those maybe who are, weren't just not able to be here tonight and would have missed that lesson. All right, Brother Tim. Tim. <laughs> All right, come lead us in our opening prayer. Let's go to God in prayer. <clears throat> our gracious, giving, and loving Father in heaven, we thank you so very much for blessing us with this, with this day. Uh, we thank you, Father, for this opportunity to gather together once again to continue to uh, rejuvenate our, our faith and rejuvenate our minds and uh, listen to uh, Brother Acuff as he uh, speaks to us about the Word and what we should know and the, the ability that you give us to apply it to our, our daily lives and we pray and ask, Father, that our faith be strengthened by what we hear and uh, what we are able to share with others. We uh, ask, Father, that you'd be with um, Brother Jerry as he leads us in singing, and of course, be with uh, Mr. Acuff as he uh, once again speaks to us. We ask that you be with all those that are on our prayer list, those that we hold near and dear to our hearts that we want to uh, pray for, that need uh, healing and restoration and recovery and uh, and just need you in their lives. We ask that you would help us to find the, those opportunities to speak to others. And as always, so we can be the living example of, uh, of your love and your power through the way we live and, and speak and act. And we thank you so much for the word and your Bible and our lives. We ask that you would Continue to be with us this week. Uh, strengthen us and, and guide our steps and our hearts. And uh, we uh, thank you for the grace and forgiveness you give us when we stumble. And we thank you for the love that you show to us. And, of course, we thank you for Jesus who died for all of our sins. And it's through his name we pray all these things. Amen. Amen.
appreciate that prayer on my behalf, Tim. For those that you might not know the song, it's 323. If you want to get a hymnal, I see all we have is the words on the PowerPoint. I have a knack of doing that. I don't know why. <laughs> 323. I care not today what the morrow may bring, if shadow or sunshine or rain. The Lord I know ruleth for everything, and all of my worry is vain. Living by faith in Jesus above, trusting confiding in his great love. I'm all home safe in his sheltering home. I'm living by faith and feel no alarm. Though tempests may blow and the storm clouds arrive, obscuring the brightness of life, I'm never alone at the overcast sky. The master looks on at the strife. Living by faith in Jesus above, trusting, confiding in his great love. From all home safe in his sheltering home, I'm living by faith and feel no alone. I know that he safely will carry me through, no matter what evils be tied. Why should I then care, though the tempest may blow, if Jesus walks close to my side? Living by faith in Jesus above, trusting, confiding in his great love. I'm all home safe in his sheltering home. I'm living by faith and feel no alarm. I Lord will return to the earth some sweet day. Our troubles will then all be o'er. The master so greatly will lead us away. Beyond that best heavenly shore, living by faith in Jesus above, trusting, confiding in his great love. From a long in his sheltering arm, I'm living by faith. The invitation song will be number 564, 564. The song before the lesson will be number 58, number 58. And we will not sing the third verse, one, two, and four. <clears throat> A wonderful Savior is Jesus my Lord. He takes the Savior to me. He hides my soul in the cleft of the rock where rivers of treasure I see. He hides my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry, thirsty land. He hides my life in the depths of his love and covers me there. there with him. 
perfect salvation, his wonderful love, I'll shout with the millions on high. He hides my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry, thirsty land. He hides my life in the depths of his love and covers me there with his hand and covers me there with his hand. Brother Aka. Really, Janet and I just appreciate so very much uh, the hospitality that you have shown to us uh, while we've been here this week. It's, uh, you know, we, we come and, and we meet folks like yourselves. Uh, you encourage us and, and the meals and uh, I'm telling you, every, every meal, all of the fellowship uh, has been really good. Hey, wow, that thing works. I appreciate it. They, uh. You know, it's, uh, it's amazing how a lot of folks are sorry that these things do work, but uh, thank you for But I, I just want you to know what a great joy it is uh, for us to be here and to be with you, and uh, certainly we are enjoying the fellowship uh, and the hospitality. You know, when you, when you go to a place you have never been, and we've never been, uh, this is my first time to preach in the state of Louisiana. I went through it once. Uh, but to have the opportunity, and I do again uh, express my appreciation to the eldership of this congregation for the invitation that they have extended to me. You've been a very gracious audience. Now, I, some, uh, some folks go to sleep. Now, if you go to sleep, don't worry about it. You know, uh, it might be the only place you can sleep, but uh, if that's your case. But I thought about this uh, congregation and, and the preacher, I don't know if he was boring, I don't know what it was, but the congregation, they just go to sleep on him. I mean, and he thought, I got to do something about this. So he bought uh, a pad, a notepad for every person in the congregation and a pen. And so they, when they would come into the building, he would give them the notepad, they, they'd pick up the notepad and the pen. One Sunday, a lady was visiting, and she came in, and she kind of sat down behind, and she noticed that everybody was, you know, and she sat down, and she didn't, well, what are they doing? And so she thought, I, I, I don't understand. And so she decided that she would peek over the guy sitting in front of her, that she would peek over his shoulder to see what he was doing. You know, he was writing. So she looked over there, and he was writing, don't go to sleep, don't go to sleep, don't go to sleep. <laughs> You know, the things, it, it, church is a great place to, for funny things to happen. Uh, you know, there's this, I thought about this wedding, and uh, this couple, man, they had this wedding, and I have never done this. Now, I don't know if Brother James has done it, but at the end, I've done a lot of weddings. I've done a, when we lived in Michigan, I did at least almost one a week because we had been there and knew a lot of folks. And so, but I have never said at the end of a wedding ceremony, if there are any in the audience who object to this, please speak now or forever hold your peace. Now, I don't know if James may do that. I've never done that. So this preacher had gone through the wedding ceremony, and so at the end, he said, now, if there's anyone here in the audience who objects to this wedding, please speak now or forever hold your peace. A beautiful young lady sitting in the back with a baby in her arms she got up and walked down to the front. Well, the groom's mother fainted. The groom, he dropped his uh, knees down. He was on the floor. One of the groomsmen uh, fell out. And the preacher, and so she came up and he said, well, ma'am, what is it you want to say? She said, we can't hear in the back. So I hope you can hear in the back. So. <laughs> the Bible says, now then, faith is the substance of things hoped for,
the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, and the things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear. The Bible says, By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. The Bible said, By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death. For God translated him. But the Bible says that he had this statement that he pleased God. It was pleasing to God. And then the Bible says in verse number 6 of Hebrews 11 that without faith it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Verse number 7 says, By faith Noah, when you think about Noah, the Bible says that he, he, by faith Noah, he learned the word of God. And when you think about what he learned, and the Bible says not only that, but that his family as well, and he indicted the world in it. So turn your Bible. I want you to look uh, at Hebrews chapter 11 with me. Because when you look at that seventh verse of Hebrews chapter number 11, by faith, Noah, now we're going to look at that. By faith, Noah, the Bible says, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear and prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by which he condemned the world and became heir of righteousness, the Bible says, by faith which is in, or righteousness which is by faith. When you and I look at, at, at Hebrews chapter number 11, now you and I can go through that entire chapter. We can read about Abraham, we can read about Sarah. Uh, Moses, the Bible said, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the children of God rather than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. When you and I look at faith, and we don't look at the faith of Noah, but I want you to think about something. Go with me to the book of James chapter number 2. In James chapter number 2, there are three kinds of faith. If you begin at about verse 17, you go down through the end of the chapter. The Bible tells us, now watch this ladies and gentlemen. Have you ever had somebody say, oh, all you've got to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. The Bible says in James chapter number 2 that faith without works is dead. So what do we find out? We find out in James chapter 2 there are three kinds of faith. There is a dead faith in James chapter 2 because the Bible says faith without works is dead. There is secondly a demonic faith. How do we know that? See folks, if faith only will save you, and there, I listen, I was in, Jet and I were in Gatlinburg, uh, and uh, I was just kind of sitting, you know, on one of those benches while my wife goes into every store there. Now, I'm sitting on a bench. I do not know why, but two young men came up to me, and they started talking to me about the Bible. And I, so I said, let, let, let me, I, I want to ask you a question. I said, do you know what the theme of the Bible is? Well, they thought they knew something about the Bible. I said, D can you tell me the theme of the Bible? Well, no. I said, the theme of the Bible is one word, someone. The Old Testament says, someone is coming. And I forget now who it was, but it's, there's a series in World Video Bible School. And I forget the, the speaker on it, but he went through the entire 39 books of the Old Testament and drew a picture of Jesus Christ out of every book of the Old Testament. And so I suggested to these two young men, I said, look, the, in the Old Testament, someone is coming. Now, I said, when you go to the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John... Someone has come. We, we mentioned last night, uh, John 1, 29, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. 
you know, we think about uh, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me, in my Father's house or many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. So you and I look at the old, someone is coming. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, someone has come. And then when you go to the book of Acts through Revelation, someone is coming again. So when you and I look at this, and so when you look in James chapter 2, faith without works is dead, and then you see the demonic faith. You, the, listen, folks, though, so these two young men, you know what they tried to convince me of? That you could be saved by faith only. I had a meeting. I, I, as a matter of fact, it was interesting. Uh, one of the young men, I, we set up a study there in Gatlinburg. Uh, a couple of days later, he came by where our motel. We sat outside uh, for about two hours, studied the Bible. And it was interesting here. I think about six months ago, uh, he sent me a, a text, and he wanted to know if I would help him. He wanted me to help support him. He's going, I well, naturally, I'm not going to do that. He's going to teach a false doctrine. But the point I wanted to see and I wanted them to understand, when you look at James chapter 2, the Bible says faith without works is dead. So there's a dead faith. And then we find the devils believed and trembled. That's a demonic faith. When an individual has, all you got to do is believe. All you have to do is have faith. Well, folks, that's demonic. The devils believed. So in James chapter 2, we have three, we have dead faith, we have demonic faith, and then I call it dynamic faith. You show me your faith without your works, and I by my works will show you my faith. When you and I, you look at our life, folks. I can stand in this pulpit every day of the week. I can broadcast on radio or television a message but until my life generates the kind of activity Jesus wants me to generate, I've got a dead faith. But when it is generating what it ought to be, it is a dynamic faith. So James 2 tells us there, in my, in my observation, James 2 tells me of three kinds. Go with me to the book of Romans. Go to Romans chapter number 1 because in the first chapter of the book of Romans, there's four kinds of faith. For an example, now if you got your Bible, go with me to verse number 8. And here's what the Bible says. Verse number 8. Uh, Paul said, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for y'all. Now look at this. That your faith is spoken of throughout the world. It's everywhere. I call that a converting faith. When folks look at the life of Larry Acuff, or they see my teaching with my life, and the Bible says their faith was spoken of throughout the world. You see, ladies and gentlemen, faith must be a converting faith. But now let me show you a second one. Stay with me and go down now to verse uh, number 12. Look what verse 12 says. That is that I may be comforted together with you. Now watch this. By the mutual faith. Now I call that common faith. A common faith. Janet and I, or our daughter, I, I, I get confused, I was there, but our daughter was going to New York for a business conference. And so she was going to be there on Sunday. And I said, April, go to the Manhattan Church of Christ. I went to the Manhattan Church of Christ uh, oh, many years, Brother Burton Kaufman went and helped to start the Manhattan Church of Christ. He was a faithful gospel preacher. He helped start that, that church and uh, that congregation. As a matter of fact, they built a building in Manhattan, and he, I think they had an apartment there. So I told April, I said, Now, April, while you're in New York, go to the Manhattan Church of Christ. So on Sunday afternoon, I called her, or maybe she called, I don't remember, and I said, April, did you go to the Manhattan church? And she said, yes. I said, well, tell me about it. She said, I'll tell you about it later, Dad. Said, There's others in the car with her. But here's what she told me later. She said, when we went in, 
we went to Bible class and the preacher was was preach or teaching the Bible class uh, and and he she said he, he was not teaching what the Bible taught. She said when we got into the worship assembly they had ladies who were serving the Lord's Supper. She said we got up and left. And she said I wrote a note and I said if you're not going to follow the Bible take the name Church of Christ off your building and she said I gave it to one of the ushers as we left. A common faith. Now you think about it. Uh, several years ago, some friends and I went out to gamble in Las Vegas. <laughs> you know better than that. We went out there for a business trip. So uh, I told them, I said, I'll, I'll, find, I'll locate the Church of Christ. So I found the, uh, the Church of Christ. We went out. It was a little building, little building. There was four of us, I think. And so we went in this little building and when I, when I got in there, all, all quickly I saw sitting over a piano. And this, uh, this fellow come up to me, and, and I said, oh, we're in the wrong place. He said, well, if you'll stay, we won't use it. I said, no, I'm not going to stay. I sa he said, well, I know where you want to go, and he showed me where to go uh, to the uh, Church of Christ. Uh, I forget the name of it. Fine congregation, about 200 uh, Ray Walker, do y'all know who Ray Walker is? Ray Walker sang with the Jordan Airs, uh, backed up Elvis Presley's, uh, many of his songs. Ray Walker led singing that day in that congregation. And after it was over, I asked him, I said, do you lead singing here every Sunday? He said, no, I'm here on a 40-week tour. To do. But he said, no, no, I only, I'm in just the rotation. We got other song leaders. Isn't that marvelous that you got those song leaders? But what's this? Common faith. Manhattan Church of Christ or a Church of Christ in Las Vegas, Nevada or if you go to a Church of Christ across town and they have women waiting on the table or serving the Lord's Supper or if they have a common faith, ladies and gentlemen, is where you and I stand on the Word of God and we believe what the Bible teaches and we practice it in our worship and in our lives. On Four kinds of faith. In Rome. We looked at a converting faith, a common faith. Skip down with me to verse number 17. The Bible says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed, now listen to this, from faith to faith. That's a communicating faith. See, the righteousness of God is revealed from what? From faith to faith, from faith to faith, from, fa from my faith to your faith. Individuals with whom you and I may come in contact with that you and I can communicate our faith to them not only by words but by the way that we live. But now there's a fourth faith here, and I call that a consecrated faith. Look at the last part of that verse. The just shall live by faith. That's a consecrated faith. So you and I look at a dead faith, a demonic faith, a dynamic, a dynamic faith, a common faith, a converting faith, a communicating faith, and a consecrated faith. So when you and I look, you know, we, we think about faith. Now, if we go to Hebrews 11 and verse 6, and the Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Verse number 7. Now watch this. By faith, Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by which he condemned the world and became heir of God by faith or righteousness, which is by faith. Now, I want, to, I want you to see this. The Bible says, by faith, Noah being warned of God. Now, watch this. Faith involves the whole man. Now, look at what the Bible says. By faith, now look at this. Noah being warned of God. How does faith come? By hearing. Faith comes by hearing. The Bible says, Romans 10, 17, Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. By faith, Noah, what did God do? God said, Noah, I want you to build an ark. 
God communicated that faith to Noah. Now here, I mean, when you think about this, faith is involved with the intellect. Watch this. By faith, Noah being one of that's intellect, folks. Now, when you and I look at this, and you, you understand, go with me. Let me give you three or four examples. Go with me to the second chapter of the book of Acts. You're familiar with that chapter. Everyone, I'm sure many of you can quote various verses, if not all of Acts chapter number two. Peter preaching to those folks. Now, when they, now watch this. When they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts. They cried out to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? What did they do? They heard it. Go with me to the book of Acts, chapter number 8. Philip, here's the Ethiopian eunuch going back home. And listen to this. Do you understand what you read? He was led as a sheep to the slaughter and as a lamb dumb before his shearer, so opened he not his mouth. Philip goes to him and he said, do, do you, uh, how can, now watch this, how can I accept some man should guide me? Let me give you another illustration. In the book of Acts, see there are folks, well, a, a little bird, a little bird toad, a spirit toad, something. Now wait a minute. In the book of Acts chapter number 12, I want you to see this. Peter, the Bible says, Peter was kept in prison. The church had gathered together and they were praying for him. Peter's in prison and you know what they're going to do? They're going to kill him the next day, waiting until after the, uh, the uh, uh, Passover. They're going to kill him the next day. What would you be doing if you're going to be killed the next day? If I, and let me tell you, if, if, they, if they put me in jail, you call the police here and say, we're going to get rid of Brother Acuff. Man, put him in jail. We'll kill him. I'm, you think I'd be asleep? Peter was asleep. Isn't that interesting? Man, I'd be calling everybody I know. I, why, 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 I, knew, I knew the Speaker of the House of Representatives in Georgia. Let's just get in touch with him for me. And, and, well, I know that. Why? I know that. And I, oh, John DeBerry, he was on the House of Representatives in Tennessee. Get, I, man, I'd be up all night trying to call everybody. Peter was asleep. What happened? An angel. An angel came in, kind of kicked him, said, Get up, Peter. I love that passage of Scripture. Get your coat. I mean, they walked out there just like you're going in and out of Walmart. Door just opened and they leave. And I want you to see something. The angel let Peter out of prison, but Peter went and preached to the people. The angel didn't. When you and I look at this, by faith Noah being warned of God, the word of God is quick and powerful. And so we, we see in Acts chapter 12, we go to Acts chapter 8 and we see Philip. The Bible said he began at the same scripture and he preached unto him Jesus. You go to Acts chapter number 2 and Peter had preached that they had crucified the Son of God. And the Bible says, now when they heard this, or you go to the book of Acts, chapter number 10, and Cornelius, a, a good, devout, uh, let me tell you, I don't know about you, but every congregation of the Church of Christ that I know of would love to have a Cornelius. He prayed to God. He was dedicated. He gave. He gave. But listen, ladies and gentlemen, he had to have words. You send to Peter. And Peter will come and tell you words whereby you and your house can be saved. Now keep in mind, I made this statement. Noah's faith involved the whole man, intellect, the Word of God. If you're going to be saved, it's going to be because you know the, what somebody has preached to you the Word of God. Now watch this. Not only did it involve the whole man in his intellect, but now if you look at that verse of Scripture, look what the Bible says. He was warned of God of things not seen as yet. 
That's an interesting statement. I don't have time to go with it, but uh, what had he not seen? Have you ever thought about what Noah had not seen? For things not seen as yet, but now watch this next statement. Moved with fear. You know what that is? Emotion. Intellect. The Bible says, Noah, being warned of God, intellect, moved with fear, emotion. I don't know. I might have told this the other day. I don't remember. Did I tell about the snake at my house the other day? I didn't tell you about that. Let me tell you, I'm scared to death of snakes. I don't care. What, somebody said, well, that's a green snake. I don't care if it's purple, green, orange. My wife and I owned some convenience stores. I was going to be the next Walmart guy, you know, whatever. We owned some convenience stores. And uh, I would get up. Uh, Janet would, would fix, we, I had biscuits and sausage at 6 o'clock. We'd open the store at 6. I'd get up at 6 o'clock, and I'd go open the store. So I had done that. I'd gotten up at 6 o'clock and gone down to the store. I opened the store, and uh, I think about 15 minutes after 6, my wife would get up, and she would make biscuits and bring them down. We'd sell them, and, and uh, we lived just, oh, I don't know, less than five minutes from the, from the store. And she called me. It was 6.15. Now, I didn't mind being called at 6.15 because I knew it wasn't the bank calling to want to know if I was going to pay them. And so uh, at 6.15, I answered the phone, and it was Janet. She said, Larry, you got to come home. I said, what do you mean? I just opened the store. I've got customers. She said, Larry, there's a snake on the stove. <laughs> I said, Janet, go next door and get Joe. I did. She said, Larry, Joe has already gone to the mill. You got to come home. I said, well, I got customers, but I finished up, locked the door, and I, I went home. I told Jan, I said, now you watch that snake. <laughs> I want to where it goes. When I got home, I couldn't get my key to get in the door. She, I, I don't know how I got in, but I got a, I, I had a, a shovel in one hand and a hammer in the other. I don't know what I was going to do. <laughs> that snake, I must, I, let me tell you, notice this. Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear. I don't mind telling you, folks, fear is an emotion. Fear is an emotion. And I'm going to tell you, now, I'll get back to the story just now. I'm trying to illustrate something. I was, in a, I, was, I was doing stalls in an airplane. Had the instructor with me. And what you, there are two kinds of stalls, power on, power off. This was a power uh, on stall. And what you do is you take your airplane and you put it straight up in the air. And so he, uh, the instructor took me, and we were about 7,000 feet, Put it straight. Well, I'm going to tell you, that thing starts shaking. Scared the living daylights out of me. And I had the, the, the stick, and I just, what you do when you, you pull back on the stick, and that, that takes the run, that puts the plane up in this position. I pulled it back, plane goes up, starts shaking, and I know then, I, so then instead of, I just pushed it to the firewall. Well, now it's doing this. He said to me, I never, he looked and he said, you better do something. Well, he did something. I think he leveled the wings. Fear, emotion. Certain things will take place. Now, you're wondering what happened to that snake. I beat it to death. It had wrapped itself around the grease bucket. And I just, man, and when I got, I said, look what you did to the cabinet. I said, I do not care. Noah, being warned of God, being warned of God, the Bible says, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, that is emotion. How many people do we know who have this, well, when I feel it right here, they have this emotional experience. We were in a thrift store, great place to buy red jackets. I was in a, in a thrift store. 
Now, if you've ever been in a thrift store, they, they don't have much for men. They had about two aisles there, stuff for men, but they got 1400 for women. I mean, just tons of it. So we're in the thrift store. I've, I've, like, I didn't see anything I was interested in. So I'm just kind of standing over here, kind of out of the way, and my wife's shopping, and there's this guy that comes up and stands by me. He gets talking Bible. And he said, uh, the Holy Spirit told me, and I'm forgetting that exact way, he said, the Holy Spirit told me something. I said, sir, the Holy Spirit told me he didn't tell you that. <laughs> I did. His eyes got about that big. He just kind of wandered off. Because, ladies and gentlemen, the Holy Spirit wrote this book right here, and the Holy Spirit didn't tell him anything, this book doesn't tell you. Noah, being warned of God, that's hearing the Word of God, moved with fear. Remember what the point was? It involved the whole man. Moved with fear. Now watch this. Prepared an ark to the saving of his hand. That's will. Intellect, emotion, and will involves the whole man. Let me illustrate. You think about will. The alarm clock goes off, and your intellect says, man, you better get up. You got to go to work. You got whatever. You better get up. The emotion says, shut up. I'm going to lay here in the bed, soft and warm. The will says, you guys can lay here and argue, but I'm going to get up and make some coffee. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to this. The Word of God teaches you to hear the Word of God, to believe in Jesus as the Son of God, to change your life by repentance, to confess His name before men, and to be baptized into Christ for the remission of your sins. That's your intellect. He lift up His eyes. Watch this. He lift up his eyes, being in torment, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried, Father Abraham, have mercy upon me, and send Lazarus that he might dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. I am tormented in this flame. When you think about being lost, or when you look at the beauty and the glory of heaven, enter in, thou blessed to the place prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Intellect tells you to hear, believe, repent, confess, and be baptized. Your emotion tells you, I do not want to be lost. I want to go to heaven. And your will says, I'm going to be baptized for the remission of my sins. Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark, to the same of his house. Now, you're wondering about that. I've got all this, the four things that Noah did. When you and I look at this, ladies and gentlemen, and we see uh, what took place. Am I hitting it right? There we go. When you and I see this, Noah's faith involved, but now Noah's faith, watch this, indicted the whole world. Noah's faith involved the whole man. But it also indicted the whole world. Why? Because when he obeyed... Ladies and gentlemen, listen. You and I need to recognize that the world is lost without Christ. If you, the Bible says, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. When you and I take the word of God, and then when you and I act upon the word of God... And then we take this message and plant it into the hearts of men and women, boys and girls. When you and I look at that, folks, it indicted the whole world. Because what, what happened? Well, you've got to go to Genesis chapter number 6. Noah was a preacher of righteousness for 120 years. Can you imagine? They laughed at him, I would imagine. What are you doing over there, man? I'm building a boat. Huh? A what? 
Why? Ah, oh man, don't you? That little Noah up there, and them boys, they're working hard. 120 years later. Hmm. Well, what's that on water? Begins to rain. Before long, that water begins to rise. Takes that boat. And our Lord washed and cleansed the earth by the flood. Noah's faith involved the whole man, but it indicted the world. The Bible says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. The things of the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, these things of the world, they're not the Father of the world, passes away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Listen to what the Bible says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may be able to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of Christ. When you and I look and, and we look at this concept of the world and we go to James chapter 5 and the Bible tells us the things of the world, lust of the flesh, but now watch this. Adultery, fornication, the works of the flesh are manifest. Galatians 5, 19. The works of the flesh, of flesh are manifest. Which are these? Fornication, adultery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, strife, emulation. That's the world, folks. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter number 4, don't steal. Don't steal. You and I recognize the Bible tells us in Revelation 21 verse 8 that all liars shall have their part in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. The Bible says the wages of sin, ladies and gentlemen, is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. The Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to this. Sin will damn your soul. Someone made this statement. Like in sin, it's like being good to a rattlesnake. It'll bite you. Years ago, they, they, people thought, well, well, you know, brother, you know, everybody said, yeah. Years ago, there was a, a, I think, a perfume fragrance. And I remember they advertised this. Most of you are probably not old enough to remember it. They advertised it, and they called it sin among. So what are we looking at? Ladies and gentlemen, we're looking at men who commit sin, who transgress the law of God. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, because sin is the transgression of the law. So when I separate myself from God, come you out from among them and be you separated. So when you and I look at this chapter of Hebrews 11 verse 7, and we look at the faith of Noah, his Noah involved the whole man. Noah's faith indicted the whole world. Noah's faith influenced his whole family. If you look, take your Bible. You need to underline this in your Bible, folks. And if you write in your Bible, some folks may not do. I do. The Bible says, move with fear, prepare an ark. Listen to this. To the saving of his house. What Noah's faith do? It influenced his whole family. Larry Acuff, I must influence my family. My family must be influenced by not only what... Oh, they hear me preach, but did they see my life? You know, it, it's when you think about, there's a, a gospel preacher. His name is David Fox. David followed me at the Highland Church in Detroit. Now, he's still there. He, he preached for several years and then left and went over to Royal Oak, but now he's back at Highland, been there, done a tremendous job at, at the Highland Church in Detroit. David... When his father passed away, I went with him down to the morgue uh, to help him to identify the body. Known David, fine gospel preacher. He was uh, 12 years old. And he came home one day and he found his mother uh, laying dead in the bathroom. 
And uh, of course, it got everything together. And so after the funeral, his dad said, David, they were from Gainesboro, Tennessee. And, and his dad said, David, uh, maybe it would be better if we would move back to Gainesboro, move back to Tennessee. It might be better for you and live in the Christian life. David, being a man of great wisdom at 12 years of age, he said, Dad, a man can be a Christian anywhere he chooses to be. Think about that, ladies and gentlemen. Because Noah's faith influenced his family, I want to live my life in such a way. Does it guarantee that my family are going to serve? No. They're free moral agents. They can make the choice they choose to make. They're going to make those choices. But I'm going to tell you this, and you're faithful. I, man, I, I'm preaching to the choir, quotation. I'm preaching to the faithful, and God bless you for being here tonight. But I'm going to say this. Those individuals, and I should have said this maybe Sunday morning, who, who attend only the worship on the Lord's Day, and they don't come back on Sunday night, and they don't go to Bible school, and they don't go on Wednesday night. What kind of an example are they setting for their family? I want my family, I want them to understand, I want them to know the Word of God, and where are they going to learn it? Noah's faith influenced his whole family. Now, I want you to see this last point. He inherited the whole reward. Isn't that great? He inherited the whole reward. You and I, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God? We've already mentioned that verse. Let not your heart be troubled. In my Father's house are many mansions. I'm going to go prepare for you. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the grave shall hear His voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life, they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Oh, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you saw or not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, them also which sleep in Jesus shall he bring with him. Turn to Revelation chapter number 21. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth was passed away, and there was no more sea. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with man, O oh men. He will dwell with them, and they shall be his God, and they shall be, and he shall be their excuse me, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Now watch this. God shall wipe away every tear. Isn't that marvelous? Away all tears from their eyes. I was 16 years old when little Kathy Ann, my cousin, my mother, of course, had three boys. She wanted a girl so bad that when her sister had Kathy Ann, my mother, my mother literally went to see her every day of her life. My aunt was preparing a meal for guests. Kathy Ann was sitting in a chair and she had the coffee pot on a, a little hot water stove or a hot water tank here. Little Kathy Ann jerked the cord and she pulled that coffee pot and scalded her to death. She lived four or five days. But I will never forget this. I said to myself, when is my mother going to stop crying? God will wipe away all tears in heaven. Now I pray, my mother was a faithful Christian. I pray that now she is with Kathy Ann and my dad and my brothers. But when I read that verse, ladies and gentlemen, God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death. I will never forget one of the first funerals that I ever did. Brian Street Church in Rossville, Georgia. And here was the sad thing about it. The fellow was not a Christian. He was not a member of the church. 
I don't know why his wife wanted his funeral at the church building, but that's where we had it. And at that point, at that time, funeral a little bit different. They rolled the, the casket out to the foyer. And I'll never forget this. He wasn't a Christian. His wife almost crawled up into the casket crying. Now, ladies and gentlemen, here's what the Bible says. No more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things have passed away. Look at that point. Noah's faith inherited the whole reward. Heaven is going to be a beautiful place. One of the dearest brothers that I've ever known, not only a dear brother, but a dear friend, Brother Charlie Prince. Memphis School of Preaching, everybody knows Charlie Prince. He was a big old, he, tall, black guy. But I'm going to tell you something. What a man. What a, his name was Prince, and he was a prince of a man. Now someday... Lord willing, I'll never forget. He, we were going to the lectures at Memphis. He always left on Saturday, and I would wait till late Sunday afternoon. And he'd always get my book and have me a seat ready to sit by him. And on that Saturday morning, he called me, or maybe Carol, I don't remember, and he was in the hospital. And he, what happened? He, in, within four months, he was deceased. But ladies and gentlemen, listen to this. Listen to this. You and I, by faithfulness to God, can enjoy the blessings of heaven. Isn't that marvelous? I can see Charlie again tonight. If you're not a Christian, obey the gospel. Be baptized for the remission of your sin. If, you're, if you've been playing church and you're just kind of in and out and playing, well, rededicate your life to the cause of Christ. Make the determination and the decision, I'm going to serve God and go to heaven. If you're subject to the invitation, will you come now while we stand and sing the invitation song? closing prayer we're going to sing one verse of 389 389 then we'll be closed in prayer <clears throat> take the name of Jesus with you child of sorrow and of woe it will joy and comfort you
Let us pray. Dear God in heaven, we thank you so much for all that you do for us, dear Lord. We thank you so much for this lesson and for the, for the example that Noah left us, dear Lord, the, the faith that he had, the faith that he showed. Help us, dear Lord, to be like him and to have that faith that will give us the whole reward that we were so diligently seeking to be in heaven one day, dear Lord. We thank you for all that you do for us. We thank you for giving us safety, giving it, letting us live in a place where we can be here and without the fear of being killed for worshiping you, dear Lord, for, for not being thrown in jail. Dear God, we ask you to please be with those who are sick, be with those who have, are traveling, be with those who have lost loved ones, dear Lord. And dear God, help us to one day to know that if, if we live our lives we will be, one day be able to be back, be, in, be able to meet the faithful that have died before us, dear Lord. We love you so much, dear God, and we can we we thank you so much for sending your Son down here to die, to to live on this earth and to be treated so poorly, and knowing that he could have just called and begged for begged for the angels to come and save him, dear Lord, just. And, but he, he loved us so much that he gave his life for us. That he, he's endured the, everything up to the cross and even the cross, dear Lord. We can't even imagine giving up heaven when we're trying so hard to get there ourselves. We love you so much and we thank you so much for your son. It's in Jesus' name we pray.